Ladies and gentlemen, it's Red Gaming Tech Top video. We're going to be talking about the Steam Box and indeed going through everything we know about the device, which is marking Valve's first foray into the console industry. Valve, of course, are responsible for, well, Half Life, which is one of the absolute biggest names in PC gaming, as well as Steam, another absolutely massive name in PC gaming, which is a platform which allows, of course, you to download games and DLC, as well as chat with friends and various other bits and pieces. Indeed, it even gives you achievements and so on. However, Valve's boss, Gabe Newell, has gone on record numerous times, and he has said that he does not like Windows 8. Indeed, he has called it a catastrophe. This is an exact quote. He has said that his company is going to be embracing the open source software Linux, which is of course is an operating system, as hedging strategy designed to offset some of the damage Windows 8 was likely to do. We want to make it as easy as possible for the 2500 games on Steam to run on Linux as well. And then went on to say Windows 8 is a catastrophe for everyone in the PC space. There are numerous reasons behind this, and I'm not going to get into every single one of them in this particular video. But one of the reasons, or well, the primary reason, at least in Gabe's opinion, is because of the Windows 8 marketplace, which he's really not a fan of. So, with their more emphasis, or should I say, with more emphasis on the... Um, so while Valve are placing more emphasis on uh, the the next platform, they're also of course developing a console, which until now we've heard rumours of, but we're not actually really sure of what it's going to consist of. And now we're actually finally getting some ideas. So before we actually jump into the new features, and before we jump into stuff such as speculation and rumours, I'm going to instead talk about the actual technical specifications, or at least what we consider to be the rough ideas of what the technical specs are going to look like. The computer manufacturer XI3 is to develop a custom PC, which is going to be pretty much the basis of the Steam Box. And indeed, the Steam Box is based upon the X7A system. So, despite the fact that Steam Box isn't exactly due... Um, isn't exactly going to be like this. We can get an idea that it's going to be roughly around this. Anyway, the X7A boasts between 4 and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a quad-core 64-bit 32NM processor running 3.2 gigahertz. That's got 4 megabytes of level 2 cache. And finally, an integrated graphics card containing up to 384 programmable cores. Anyway, this whole setup costs about $1,000, which is obviously far more than most consoles. So it's possible that Valve are going to try to reduce that as much as possible. The entry-level X5A, from of course the same company, which also uses Linux, costs only $500, and you're like, why the hell are you only there? Meanwhile, from Microsoft, Phil Harrison has issued Valve a warning on the dangers of entering into the, co the console marketplace. Phil Harrison, who also is serving to be Microsoft Studios executive, is an ex-Sony PlayStation development boss, so he knows his way around the console industry, and he is quoted to say, entering the hardware business is a really tough business. You have to have a great fortitude to be in the hardware business, and you have to have deep pockets and a very strong a balance sheet it's not possible for every new hardware entrant to go to scale they can be successful on small scale but it's very rare for new hardware entrant to get to scale and i mean tens or hundreds of millions of units there are a very small number of companies that can make that happen and it's not just having a great brand or having great software experience it's about having a supply chain and a distribution model and a manufacturing capacity and all the other things that go with it it's a non-trivial problem to solve and it can take thousands of people to make it a reality he also continued on and said i admire valve as a company and what they've achieved with steam and um well i think that kind of sums up really Valve, of course, do have very deep pockets. That's one thing for certain. They do have the expertise, both already in-house and with their recently invested-upon XI3. 
Now, of course, Valve do have a lot of experience when it comes to software, but when it comes to actual distribution of PC hardware, or should I say console hardware, that's completely different. Despite all of this, it's a good chance that the system will be fairly popular, at least with a certain demographic, a demographic of gamers. But just how popular, well, who the heck knows. However, that isn't to say that that's the end of it. The Verge has had an interview with Mr. Nell, and he's explained that he likes the idea of hardware capable of streaming to multiple displays through local networks, and has gone on record and quoted, the Steam box will also be a server any PC can serve to multiple monitors, so over time, the next generation, post Kepler, which is a NVIDIA based um, graphics card by the way just in case you guys aren't aware it's well more shall I say the chipset of the NVIDIA based graphics card anyway getting back to the quote you can have one GPU that's serving up to eight simultaneous game calls so you can have one PC and eight televisions and eight controllers and everyone getting great performance out of it while used to having one monitor or two monitors now we're saying let's expand on that a little bit he went on to say, we'll come out with our own and we'll sell it to consumers by ourselves. That'll be a Linux box and if you wish to install Windows, you can. We're not going to make it hard. That's This is not some locked box by any stretch of the imagination. As a little aside, despite the fact that Newell has claimed that it's going to be Linux based, a Valve engineer, Ben Krasnov, has told in gadget that it might not be and has said that Valve has no plans to announce exactly what the company is doing until after 2013. So what about the controls for this thing? Well, Newell is definitely not a fan of motion controls and has actually said motion just seems to be a way of thinking of your body as a set of communication channels your hands, your wrist muscles, and your fingers are actually your highest bandwidth. So let's try and talk to a game with your arms essentially saying, oh, we're going to stop using Ethernet and go back to a 300 board dial-up modem. He said that Valve is looking more seriously at creating a device that uses biometric data and gaze tracking. So what about the whole, can you actually sell it to people? You know, will people actually buy this thing? Will it appeal to non-PC gamers? What about the you know the typical person who just wants to buy an Xbox because they just want you know a quick blast on something in the living room? Well, Gabe also said something about that too. He said the internet is super smart. If you do something that is cool, it's actually worth people's time. Then they'll adopt it. If you do something that's not cool and sucks, you can spend as many marketing dollars as you want. They just won't. So what are my predictions? Well, the market is extremely up in the air at the moment. We have a lot of new technology coming out. Of course, Project Shield from NVIDIA. And we have a lot of new mobile, um, well, a lot of new mobile technology. We have the PS4 and, of course, Xbox 720, assuming that's what they actually end up being called, which is, of course, going to be winging its way to us probably by the end of this year or certainly early next. We, of course, have the Wii U, which is currently out, and from what I've heard, is not selling too badly at all. So right now, it's anybody's ball game, and definitely the market is getting bigger. However, as... Phil Harrison has warned there is only a certain amount of wiggle room that companies have and honestly most hardware failures, well most companies do end up with a failure on their hands. Indeed even if you look at the original Xbox it didn't sell that well. Many people agree including Microsoft himself that the real reason for the Xbox One was to pretty much get their brand out there and to say hey you know what um, this is what we're doing and what do you guys think? It pretty much was a very expensive experiment on the part of Bill Gates and Microsoft themselves. But hey, they did get uh, Xbox Live out of it, for example. Whether we're going to see the same from Valve is unknown. And of course, the major problem for many of our consumers are, is price. Obviously, if, for example, it's $500, I'm just using this as an example, and let's say the Xbox 720 is $350, for most people it's not very difficult to understand. Plus, don't forget, let's say, for example, myself, I am typically a PC gamer. 
Now let's say that I can see, I don't know, this sucker on the shelf, or let's go with once again $500. It could be, you know, $300, it could be $400, it could be $500, it could be less or more, who knows, but let's go with that. The thing is, for the most part, unless the you know experience is considerably better for cheaper, I'm typically going to go for the PC. Simply because, well, you can upgrade it and you've got so many more options. All of these are something to consider. So, I, I have no doubt, however, that Gabe is not an idiot. He really does know what he's doing, so he's not going to just jump into something. Valve um, encountered some resistance even when the original Steam was launched. I remember when Steam, Steam was launched back in the day, especially of early Counter-Strike, when 1.6 was coming out, people really didn't like it. I remember there was a lot of complaints from, from many of my friends, and they were just like, oh, I'm getting disconnected again, Steam sucks, uh, Steam sucks, shall I say, it's too slow, it, you know, doesn't have a good games list, I think I'm getting more lag, what have you. Some of it wasn't even legitimate complaints, to be honest, they were just saying it because they just didn't like it, and Steam has had many revisions and improvements over time, but, you know, they're no, they're no um, strangers to... Pretty much battling through it is really what it comes down to. Bear in mind that back then, although there was you know, applications to kind of unify PC gaming, it certainly wasn't to the standard that it is now. And obviously back then it was a far harder to buy games digitally. One of the real reasons for that is, you know, in the early 2000s you just didn't have the internet connection speeds that you do now. It's just one of those facts of life. And obviously now we're getting faster connections. Internet is becoming, well, a digital distribution medium, it's that simple. So yeah, how are we going to be seeing this in the not too distant future? Well, it's obvious the console's not going to be released this year. Um, it's probably going to be next, if, um, well, I'd say within the next year or so, at a pure push. So who the heck knows, it's very early to tell, and obviously they've not even real given the specifications yet. Anyway, I think that's about it for idle speculation, so what are your thoughts? What would it take for you to buy the damn thing? Would you be happy if it was a Windows box, or would you prefer it to go the more open source Linux route, or don't you really care as long as you play the damn games? I am very interested to know what they're going to be doing with this whole biometric data thing, and if they actually really push it. To be honest, I've gone on record a few times and I've said that I don't really like motion controls. There are numerous reasons behind this. I just don't really feel that add anything to a game. Uh, there are a few exceptions behind this. There are a few games it does help. But generally, I just don't really like it. Um, I doesn't say that, you know, I'm against the way I think it's a pretty cool console. But I just don't really find that motion controls add that much to my personal gaming experience. But it will be interesting to see yet another take on them. Not that, you know, biometric data is exactly another take. But you get the general idea. Anyway, I'm going to call this video, so hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I will see you around soon. Bye for now, take care of yourselves.